Coral reefs have been shaping the face of this planet for millions of years, creating ecosystems on an enormous scale. These reefs are home to millions of species, harboring a level of biodiversity that rivals that of tropical rainforests. Sclerotinian, or reef-building corals, are the engineers of these ecosystems. Their calcareous skeletons are the framework of modern reefs. Under these conditions, corals have flourished despite being surrounded by nutrient-poor waters. The key to their success is a symbiosis with the algae Cymbidinium, providing crucial photosynthetic energy in an environment where food is scarce. While we know quite a bit about the symbiotic relationship between coral animal hosts and their photosynthetic algae, in recent years we have also learned that corals feature a vast range of bacterial interactions. For instance, coral-associated microbes play a role in nitrogen fixation and antimicrobial compound production. At the same time, we see that shifts in coral microbiota correlate with the appearance of coral disease and coral bleaching, and this suggests a link between microbes, coral health, and state of coral reef ecosystems. Nitrogen cycling in corals involves complex interactions between the host and its symbiotic partners. Since nitrogen is required for growth and productivity of corals, maintaining a stable and constant supply is crucial to the stability of the organism. While the coral host may acquire new nitrogen via heterotrophic feeding, an uptake of inorganic nitrogen, microbial processes like nitrogen fixation, nitrification, and denitrification may help to optimize the internal nitrogen availability. The coral holobiont is able to thrive in a wide range of nutrient conditions. We assume that microbial nitrogen fixation may help to fill the gap when nitrogen availability is limited. So in times of excess nitrogen availability, on the other hand, decreased nitrogen fixation rates in combination with nitrification and denitrification processes may help to remove nitrogen from the coral holobiont. But, unnoticed by many, coral reefs are disappearing on a global scale. The direct and indirect effects of overfishing, nutrient enrichment, and climate change have caused the decline of corals around the world. Coral reefs are threatened by uh, the increasing ocean temperatures, so there's the fear that coral reefs might actually vanish within the next 100 years due to increased amounts of heat stress. In order to stop this development, scientists around the globe are searching to understand the mechanisms behind coral bleaching. Recent studies suggest a link between nutrient enrichment and coral bleaching. In particular, nitrogen enrichment in combination with low phosphorus concentrations may reduce the bleaching threshold of corals by altering the membrane composition of the algae symbionts. Now this is of course interesting if you link this with nitrogen cycling corals, because processes like nitrogen fixation for example can really change the NTP ratio in corals. And Everything we know to date appears to suggest that nitrogen fixation activity in corals indeed increases as temperatures go up. So what that implies, of course, is that nitrogen fixation may be one of the key mechanisms that can really determine the threshold at which coral bleaching occurs. Similar mechanisms may also be involved in coral diseases or coral algae interactions, highlighting the importance nitrogen cycling microbes may play in the coral holobiont. So, in a nutshell, what did we learn from this paper? First of all, nitrogen cycling may either stabilize or destabilize the functioning of the coral holobiont. And within the coral holobiont, um, the interaction between the animal, the coral, the zooxanthellae, and the associated microbes might be much more complex than we thought so far. So, you can see the coral holobiont is a whole new playground of research opportunities, and that's why we want you to read that paper. Thanks. <laughs>